Hello, uh, this is Dr. David Hazy. I'm here at the Maxwell Clinic, uh, and I am super excited to be with you tonight. Um, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, as I've said in the kind of our pre-conversation uh, before starting the webinar, if you have any questions, make sure that you're going to put them in the question and answer area, um, and we're going to get to as many of those as we can tonight. So um, uh, tonight, I'm going to start up my uh, start my screen here so that I can. Uh, show you some fun slides that we've gotten put together and, um, and kind of dig into all of this information. So tonight we're going to be talking about from neurodegeneration to neuroregeneration uh, and specifically about regenerative plasma exchange, which we do here at the Maxwell Clinic. Um, this is a super exciting talk for me to give because we've been working on this for a long time and uh, the results have really been encouraging. Um, and so let's dig in. I'm your host, Dr. David Hasse. So I want to start by saying I have a huge amount of respect for anybody who is on this webinar, uh, mainly because of your bravery. Because frankly, memory loss and dementia are two incredibly difficult ideas. Um, you know, the we don't want to talk about it. Uh, and denial is one of the biggest problems we have in dealing with this issue, uh, either uh, the denial of a person that there is any problem going on or the denial of a family member. Um, and, and so I just want to first of all say, start out by saying thank you uh, for being brave and to recognize that it takes courage to address this because it's a really scary subject. It was one that frankly I tried to avoid for a long time in medical practice. Uh, but it was inevitable that uh, we should have to find our way because over 6 million people uh, in the United States right now are actually living with dementia right now. It's a lot. If we look at these graphs, notice how all these lines are kind of trending down. These are the uh, a standardized rate of disease per 100,000 females in the UK. Uh, but we see one line, the green line, going up. What is that green line? That's to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. That's right. As we are being successful in helping people to live longer, unfortunately, we're not being as successful at keeping their brains as healthy as their bodies throughout that course of time. So uh, when we're thinking about a healthy brain, it's uh, big and puffy and actually pink, not gray. And, um, but a severe Alzheimer's disease brain is shrunken and shriveled. But let's think about a different name here. For, uh, really, we should be thinking about dementia. Dementia is literally unbraining. It is a process of neurodegeneration. So a slow progress of the loss of connections. And it is a multifactorial process. There's not one single thing that's causing it. Uh, and, it and we'll have a whole lot more to say about that later. But the truth of it is, it's a, it's a progressive process. It starts very early in life. It's relentless. And frankly, it's terrifying because it goes under the radar for so long before it's known to be a problem. Because when does neurodegeneration start? Well, it really starts in about your 20s. Uh, we already start losing connections in between neurons in our 20s. Uh, and by the time Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed, uh, over 40% of these uh, neuron connections have actually been lost already. Uh, and so what we see here is that even over just 14 months, we see a progressive decline in the uh, overall physical and mental functioning of individual with Alzheimer's disease. And usually you don't see this data presented very much, just how relentless this condition is because Without knowledge, a solution exists. You know the problem really feels like too much to bear. But uh, you're going to see the slide later, and I'm excited to say it's going to give you hope. Um, so, uh, and why is there reason to hope? Because fundamentally, what I believe is the body is designed to heal. It just is, and and that aging does not equal dementia. Think about it. Not everybody that attains age 85 or 90 has dementia. You have people that are really sharp. So unless everybody that age um, has dementia, you can't blame it on just age alone. There's lots of variables that exist. 
Um, and the thing I want you to remember, I'm going to import and reinforce this is that when we clean the blood, the body and the brain actually work better. Um, this is uh, a process of called regenerative plasma exchange. And I think it really brings new hope uh, to reverse the process of neurodegeneration and tissue aging. And it is a multifactorial treatment in and of itself. Well, where'd this whole idea come from? Uh, it came from mice actually, and something called, uh, something called heterochronic parabiosis, big words but it's where you take an old, an, an old mouse and a young mouse, and you actually sew them together by a little flap of skin side by side. And within a remarkable a short period of time, uh, something amazing happens and the old mouse starts to turn young. Uh, it starts having better blood flow. Uh, it, its smell returns, its muscles rejuvenate, new brain cells start to sprout. Uh, but that young mouse that was attached to the old mouse actually gets stunted. It gets its health becomes impaired because of its exposure to old. And this was a revolutionary idea. And this data was replicated at Stanford, Berkeley, MIT. This is solid science. And so a lot of this has been saying, well, why is this number one? And two, how can we mimic this in the clinical space? So, um, First of all, let's think a second about plasma or blood. Blood is red, right? We think of the red, we think of red blood cells. And most of the th things that we think of with regard to blood are the cells, you know, the platelets, the red blood cells, the white blood cells. And that's really the solid part or the formed elements of blood. But then you also have plasma and plasma is the liquid part of blood. And the major component of plasma are proteins, uh, albumin and antibodies, immunoglobulins, and factors that control your clotting system. But there's a lot more that's in plasma. Uh, for instance, there's hormones in plasma. There are minerals and vitamins and nutrients. Uh, there's uh, nutrients of all different types, electros electrolytes, peptides that regulate how the body functions, fats, sugars, organic acids, and exosomes, which are little packets of information uh, that tell the cells to be uh, usually express a younger type of a uh, cell type. But there's also crud in the plasma, right? There are damaged molecules, there's broken down DNA, there's metabolic waste, there's infectious particles and toxins. Uh, some of those toxins are some of the compounds that are associated with Alzheimer's disease, such as amyloid beta 42, which is bound tightly to albumin uh, in the bloodstream. So plasma is a very complex substance. And it, it turns out that if um, you, uh, so let me read this quote here from Irina Convoy, who's one of the, the primary, researchers, uh, primary researchers in this field. She says that altogether, current literature strongly suggests that aging in general results from the abandonment of tissue maintenance by resident stem cells, which become inhibited by their aged organismal niche. Now, what that means is that the healing that occurs in your body happens from stem cells that are distributed throughout all of your tissues everywhere. And, and these stem cells are the ones that will, will divide and create new tissue and repair the body ongoingly. But those stem cells only act uh, or only work as well as their surroundings are clean and indicative of youth and health. So they took stem cells. And so on the top panel here, you see young stem cells in a young niche or a young environment, and those do effective tissue repair. And then in the blue category, blue band, we see old stem cells, see little speckles and they're kind of wrinkled. Uh, those old stem cells are in an old environment and the old environment actually causes those stem cells to behave old and not do much healing. So, but if you take those old stem cells and you put them into a younger or a cleaner environment, what happens? Those, those individual stem cells actually start to rejuvenate and act young again. So this is a really remarkable idea. This is actually an environmental therapy. When we change the quality and the character of the plasma, the stem cells body-wide behave differently. This is really good news 
when we're fighting a degenerative disorder. Because we actually see multi-tissue regeneration in these mice that are undergoing parabiosis. So uh, the, these young or these old mice were helped by this clean young plasma of the young mouse. And it saw, saw that the muscles you know, regenerated and they looked younger and they recovered faster from injury. The liver looked younger. There's faster injury recover, recovery and a reversal of fatty liver disease. The brain, there was new neurons sprouting in the brain, better memory on testing and actually smell recovering and smell is a part of the brain. Kidneys uh, also had decreased markers of kidney aging. Uh, the immune system behaved younger, uh, B cells and T cells function improved. Uh, and in the skin, bone and connective tissue, it looked younger, behaved younger, and there was a reversal of osteoporosis. This is quite a list, isn't it? Well, it's because it's the body that's doing the healing. It's the stem cells that were already in these mice, already in these mouse's tissues, that all of a sudden were in a cleaner, more functional environment. And voila, they started functioning better. The good news about this is that if you clean the plasma, and that can mean having a healthier, cleaner lifestyle to an extent, those stem cells actually function better. So your stem cells act the age of their environment. So the old and sick plasma makes for old and sick acting stem cells. So cleaning the plasma removes toxic factors and induces stem cells to act younger. I think this can be understood by thinking about Betty White, right? Isn't she a doll? Oh my gosh, what a powerhouse. She's 99 right now, looking at her 100th birthday. And how does Betty White act so young, right? She's old, but she acts young. Well, she surrounds herself with a young environment. And look at the smile on her face. I mean, is that woman acting old? No, sir. <laughs> but um, I always love it when Betty White can be the one to teach us something. What a dear she is. Uh, so, you know, when we start to think about uh, turning our attention from stem cells back towards dementia, um, dementia is a very late stage process because that's actually a degradation of the organ itself, right? The brain is not functioning on the whole and therefore it's not functioning very well, but the brain is also made of tissues and the tissues are made of cells and the cells are made of molecules. So when we're talking about the stem cell function, we're talking about something that's very deep and, and rooted in. So symptoms of memory loss or dementia are actually late stage events in degeneration. Um, with Parkinson's disease, the tremor that people see, um, those individuals may have lost up to 80% of the type of, of uh, brain cell that helps inhibit that by the time you start getting tremors. By the time you start having memory loss, there's a substantial amount of cellular death that has already happened. And so early symptoms are really important. Things like subtle short-term memory changes, <clears throat> a difficulty finding the right words, changes in mood, uh, apathy, you know, just not caring. And it's like, uh, I'm just done with life. You know, that's not just getting old. I mean, we really have to recognize the human spirit has an incredible desire to, to contribute and to be alive. Uh, no matter how old you are, if your brain is healthy. Uh, difficulty completing, you know, just normal everyday tasks are another sign of early dementia. A mild confusion, you know, losing one's place in a story or in a, in a situation. Difficulty following a storyline, like, you're like, oh, I can't, you know, they don't really get it in the movie. Um, uh, a failing sense of direction you know, are not really orienting themselves as well as possible. Being repetitive or being repetitive or, or, or being repetitive. Sorry, it, you, you have to hear. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making fun of anything here, but uh, one has to smile or, or cry at some situations. And uh, struggling to adapt to change. All of these are early signs of dementia that do deserve getting evaluated. 
And, um, and you'll see why this becomes so important because the consequences of dementia are so severe. You know, we have a loss of independence, a loss of one's sense of self, um, a loss of the knowledge of contributing in the world and feeling like you matter. Uh, and uh, to just be frank, it's a massive financial burden. Um, no matter the path that one takes, whether just being in complete denial that there's a problem and allowing things to progress or to be uh, proactive, to work to uh, recover and hold on to one's memory. Uh, and also there's a, there's a big burden on caregivers, not to mention that death is an actual consequence of dementia, right? One third of seniors die because of Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. That's actually more than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. Caregivers spend an average of 24 hours per week providing unpaid assistance to a loved one. Uh, this condition is, um, is, is taxing on the entire family system or the entire network of an individual. It can bring out beautiful relationships and all of that, but it still is, it's hard and taxing. Um, just to give you an idea of just how expensive uh, dementia is, uh, it, the cost of dementia as a whole and caregiving costs and direct costs lands somewhere in between the entire Medicaid uh, budget for the United States and all out-of-pocket expenses in the US. It, it, I, I checked those numbers several times, they blew my mind away when I was looking at this. Uh, and the average rate for memory care center uh, is about $5,000 per month. Uh, and it can be as high as about $10,000 a month, which would be $120,000 a year. Um, so, you know, the, the processes to prevent these conditions are, are not without expense either. Um, cleaning the blood uh, is what is possible to help this body and brain work better. Uh, and um, this treatment, now you understand the complexity of plasma and the complexity of stem cells, you realize that we're actually changing the environment of what a stem cell lives in, in order to change its function. So, so a little bit more about me, you know, why, why do I care? What have I been involved in? So you heard about the last, over the last five years, I've been really passionate after finding out about parabiosis, it's actually been longer than that. Um, I've been passionate about figuring out how can we utilize this remarkable therapy of cleaning the plasma or, or providing healthier plasma to an individual to cause body-wide stem cell regeneration. Uh, I did a TED talk in 2018. You're welcome to look it up. It'll give some context what we're talking about, and you'll, you'll know what that funny thing in my hands uh, is if you watch the TED talk. I was actually born on a farm in South Dakota. I'm a farm boy. I'm really focused on practical things. I went to Vanderbilt uh, for medical school. Uh, I went to Mayo Clinic for residency and practice. I <clears throat> was one of the uh, original uh, board certified holistic doctors uh, in the United States. I'm a certified nutritional specialist. Uh, I am a founding member of the Institute for Functional Medicine and I'm on their, cert their faculty and I teach the certification course. Um, uh, I founded the Maxwell Clinic in 2003, uh, really uh, is as a laboratory to figure out what creates health. Because I recognized when I was at Mayo that I, I love diagnosing and treating disease. It's a very important part, but a part that was missing for me was why are people getting ill and what can we do to create health? And that's where all this other learning went from. I became board certified in neurofeedback, being very, becoming very brain centric. Um, um, I am board certified by the American Board of Integrative Medicine uh, and uh, certified by uh, the American Society for Apheresis Medicine. And what we're gonna talk about next is apheresis. So when, when I look at dementia, I see a, like a human, a very important, infinitely valuable person that is struggling with a brain problem. That brain problem is actually a multifactorial problems of a whole bunch of biochemical, uh, vascular, 
and toxic components. And this is what makes dementia so difficult. It's not, a, it's not like having strep throat and taking penicillin, voila, we're done. No, this is a systems failure. And uh, this is what a plasma exchange looks like. Um, so an individual comes into our office and we put an IV in the arm and this old blood is pulled out. Uh, it goes into um, our apheresis device. We have a state-of-the-art device, uh, devices. And then they're, <clears throat> it's a centrifuge. So their plasma is separated from their cells and the old plasma gets put out into bags and eventually thrown away. And then all of that person's red cells, white cells, platelets are kept and, and carefully transmitted um, and combined with a replacement clean plasma protein combination. Um, we also uh, customize a tremendous number of things to uh, augment that therapy uh, for that person. And so all the person's own cells, their clean albumin and plasma proteins, as well as any customized augmentations gets returned inside via another vein to the other arm. So uh, this is a really remarkable process and this continues on. And depending upon the weight of that individual, uh, at the end, we may have removed anywhere from about uh, two and a half uh, cc's of uh, plasma or um, uh, to, excuse me, sorry, anywhere from 2,500 cc's of plasma to 4,000 cc's of plasma. So two and a half to four liters. It's a very sizable, this is what we call a total plasma exchange. Uh, and uh, it's um, a remarkable process. So that person getting an opportunity to reboot their stem cells by removing a vast number of toxic and inhibitory factors that are in the body. Now, this is a standard medical procedure. Uh, we treat patients with severe autoimmune disease with this plasma exchange process. Um, uh, myasthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, neuromyelitis optica, uh, many conditions that uh, we can treat uh, because that would remove the toxic antibodies that's causing those autoimmune conditions. Uh, so this is used using a, uh, a clear, standardized, understood science and applying it in a different way. So a very large trial was done looking at many of the processes we do, uh, and um, this is called the AMBAR trial. And now do you note this uh, graph again that I showed earlier on? And um, this is looking at the global um, at the global function of individuals with um, uh, moderate dementia. And it, this is a study that was done over 14 months. And what is the normal progression over 14 months, which is a, a steady decline in overall function, uh, which leads to you know, loss of ability to communicate, loss of bowel and bladder function, and finally loss of being able to move or eat. Um, very sad. Uh, in this study, what they did is this plasma exchange um, and they gave a full plasma exchange weekly for six weeks. Boom, 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 boom. And then they did a really kind of very small mini partial exchange once a month then for 14 months thereafter. And, and what happened? Well, guess what? The rate of decline went down over 61% over those 14 months. That means 61% less decline over 14 months. This is amazing. No, no, no uh, dementia intervention has ever come anywhere close to this, uh, including some of the new medications that have recently been approved and you know, that, that, that did not get approved for many, many times and then got approved. But these, these particular outcomes are astounding. And uh, I think what's also important is that this was looked at from many different angles, many different uh, cognitive studies, functional studies, behavioral studies, rating scales by the caregiver to see if the caregiver thought anything was helping. And all of these had agreement. Not only that, they did looked at the fluid that came out of the spine, the spinal fluid, and they saw that the toxic molecules that had been building up in the brain, those levels normalized. So the amyloid uh, beta-142 and the phosphorylated tau, um, by cleaning the plasma, uh, the fluid around the brain found a way to clean. 
And we do believe it actually cleaned the brain. Pretty cool. And then they also did PET scans, PET, FDG PET scans that measure the metabolism of the brain. And there they saw that there is less evidence for progressive neuronal death. Uh, so we have measurements of cognitive function, measures of biological normalization, and measures of metabolic uh, improvement uh, compared to uh, the placebo group. So this is a group of over 500 patients, uh, double blind, multi-center, multinational clinical trial, looking at the ability of this plasma exchange process to change the trajectory of disease in individuals with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. Okay. So always three goals when you're looking at neuroregeneration. All right. The first is to slow the process, you know, slow the progression of neurodegeneration. That's number one. And that was shown here. Number two, stop the progression of neurodegeneration. Number three, reverse the process of neurodegeneration. And it's very important to think of it as three separate goals. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's profound. It's very important that one, uh, start early in this process, because remember, we said there's progressive neuronal death. So the earlier that one starts, um, the more neurons one has to work with. And the more of those neurons are maybe just sick rather than dead, uh, because you can't bring the dead back to life. You, you may heal the sick as it comes to cells or humans, but you can't bring the dead back to life. And so even with neuroregeneration and neurogenesis, there's limited effect that that's going to have. So starting early, starting as soon as possible is the most important thing. Okay, let's take a look at another scale. This is also looking at cognitive function. I want to give, make a different point here. So this is comparing all patients, which we see on the far left, uh, to individuals uh, that they, they split out all patients into moderate Alzheimer's disease. And you see that curve is almost, is, is a steeper curve uh, than, the, than the all patient. And then if we think about mild Alzheimer's disease, the curve is much more gradual. So the earlier you are in the process of neurodegeneration, the more subtle and slow the findings are. This lulls people, I believe, into complacency. It's like, well, it's not so bad. I'm just getting a little older. My memory is not as sharp as I was. But this is the opportune time to make a difference. Because look at this difference. If we look at all patients, um, this process pretty much stopped uh, progression. In moderate Alzheimer's disease, it did the first goal. It slowed progression, like I said, around 60%. But in mild Alzheimer's disease, a remarkable thing happened. These individuals were actually had better brain function 14 months after the beginning of this trial than when they started. Not only did they just do not as bad as people that got the placebo, but they actually did better. They ended up better than how they started. That's remarkable. So the major points are the earlier in the memory loss process one begins, the more benefit one likely achieves. And, and that includes for prevention as well. The earlier you start making small changes in your lifestyle, uh, in exercise, eating clean, decreasing inflammation, controlling infections, uh, decreasing toxin, you know, everything to make your plasma cleaner today, uh, all of that matters. So the day to start is now. <laughs> um, and so many people actually seek us out for longevity promotion, utilizing this plasma exchange even before memory loss uh, begins. And you can understand why that is when you understand that we're actually looking at multi-tissue regeneration uh, as the mechanism by which this process moves forward. Okay, um, let's go on. So now let's take this same, where I, I left the arrows where they were, and I wanna highlight something else that they found out about this study, which I think is pretty remarkable. Uh, we're gonna take those arrows away and we're gonna put in some circles. This circle emphasizes the areas where um, the first six weeks where these individuals got weekly plasma exchanges, boom, 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 boom. And notice that the most improvement, you see the purple line going up, the most improvement that was seen in the study was when these plasma exchanges were being done most frequently. After they shifted to less frequent 
and uh, a much smaller volume of plasma exchanges, the effects tapered. Uh, we think we, we think we can do better. Um, we're gathering the data to help prove this and to continue to modify and improve our techniques in this deal. But the most benefit occurred during the time of weekly plasma exchanges. Very important to recognize. So we believe that more frequent and higher volume plasma exchanges are better than less frequent plasma exchanges. So our Maxwell Regenerative Plasma Exchange we're the original developer, developer and world leader in regenerative plasma exchange. Uh, we have the largest database of results tracking. Uh, we have the highest levels of customization and safety assurance. And we have opportunities for systems medicine uh, integration in this process. And now I think you're understanding that why when we clean the blood, the body and the brain work better. And this is why regenerative plasma exchange, we believe is bringing new hope uh, to reverse the process of neurodegeneration and tissue aging. So we're not just working on the brain. We are actually thinking about the body as a whole. So it's a multifactorial treatment that is treating multiple tissues uh, in the multiple organs. So let me tell you about one of our patients that's been going through this process. This is Gary. Um, and, and this is his direct quote. He said, I found out I had the Alzheimer's gene uh, actually he had two genes, ApoE44, which drastically increases his risk of developing Alzheimer's disease a few years ago. I was frustrated that I wasn't performing well at work, and I often flew off the handle at things that didn't bother me before. Remember, irritability? Because I have a family history of Alzheimer's, I knew these were early signs of the disease, and if I didn't do something, I would eventually pass away in the manner my mother and my brother did. I was depressed and anxious and felt like I was losing control. I was concerned about my future, but more importantly, about the impact I would have on my family and business. It's not just about me, it's about the big picture. Of note, when we did MRIs and volumetric uh, analysis of his MRI, we saw that he had very substantial hippocampal atrophy. The hippocampus is one of the parts of the brain that shrinks the most with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we also did quantitative EEG and electrophysiologic studies uh, supporting uh, his diagnosis of dementia. Uh, well, what would his wife think? Um, his wife said, she said, I'm a very strong person, but I have to admit when we found out my husband had the Alzheimer's gene, I felt anxiety. We run a business together and I often notice him just sitting at his desk, resting his forehead in his hand saying, I just can't think. He was visibly frustrated. And he also started to grow increasingly irate at some of our staff and began having anger outbursts. I felt scared for him and me and everyone else involved. We were afraid of how the disease would progress and we knew we had to do something. So um, all right, it gets me pretty emotional. I love these guys. <laughs> so this is, Gary, this is Gary's statement three months into getting weekly uh, regenerative plasma exchanges. And he said, listen, um, let's go. Let's make it happen. So he said, at Maxwell Clinic, I was shown how to improve my diet and what supplements could possibly help. But I also wanted to do everything I possibly could. So I started regenerative plasma exchange. This combination of treatments has given me balance again. My whole persona has changed. Now I'm more relaxed and my mental clarity has improved. I can do things from memory that I couldn't do before. I feel 20 years younger and I'm actually enjoying life again. And to see the change in him as he laughs now, uh, his skin looks amazing. He's lost wrinkles. Uh, he, you know, his family and friends and workers are all asking him, what have you done? It looks like you've gotten a facelift. <laughs> and we're just sitting back and smiling and like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, but what his wife said really hit me. She said, after a series of regenerative plasma exchange treatments, my husband's a changed person. He's calmer and doesn't go off on tirades anymore. He has more energy and is more forgiving to all those around him. His memory is as good as it has been and possibly even better than it has been in the 12 years I have known him. I feel such relief and I'm so grateful. Before I felt confused about what was wrong with him and wondered why he was like he was. Now I feel relaxed and we're looking forward to the future. We feel like we've gotten a second chance at life. Um, yeah, this is not them, but this is kind of, this is how they act and this is how they look. I mean, I'm just, 
all kinds of all kinds of wonderful energy in these people. And to really to help somebody who uh, has really the most challenging genetic profile and already evidence of a tissue um, a degeneration, a substantial, uh, and to see him coming back, not just from a cognitive standpoint, but really from an emotional standpoint, being able to self-regulate. He recounted an amazing incident at work that um, would have caused me to fly off the handle had that happened in our environment. Um, and he instead just calmly dealt with it, worked on his policy and said, let's implement this and do this instead. And he, he just shook his head. He said, I honestly can't believe I did it. I handled it that well. Um, you know, and he said it was because I was able to think straight. Um, so our brains really are the gateway to our quality of life. Um, so, um, with regard to our regenerative plasma exchange, I just want to advocate for you, care for your brain, care for your brain lovingly. All right. This is not a place for judgment. This is not a place for shoulds, woulds. Care for your brain lovingly. It's an amazing gift. Care for it honestly. Wherever you are, you are. Um, denial doesn't help anyone. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt, right? Uh, it is, uh, it's actually one of our worst problems when it, de when it comes to, um, changing the trajectory of our life. I want to encourage you to care for your brain courageously, um, be brave. And if you can't be brave yourself, ask a family member or a friend or somebody to be brave with you or for you, uh, care for your brain comprehensively. Remember it is the most complex structure in the known universe and um and uh and and it, there's many many different ways in which it functions and many ways in which it dysfunctions so be curious um uh, i actually wrote a book called curiosity heals the human um and in it i do talk more about our regenerative plasma exchange but and then uh, lastly care for your brain now um there's no better time to start um no matter where you are um, remember how old you are, uh, taking better care of your brain. It's one of the best things you can do to enjoy your life more, to contribute more fully, uh, and to, uh, just enjoy this wonderful opportunity we have to be alive. So I just want to say thank you very much. So if you have any interest at all, please schedule a consult at, uh, maxwellclinic.com, uh, uh, forward slash RPE. Uh, or there should be a link in the chat box as well that you can click to make a calendarly uh, appointment. And, uh, and then we can uh, see what we can do to um, help that process along. So, uh, so I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen right now. And I'm going to go and check on some of these uh, question and answers. And let's see what we have here. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. Um, so dear Dr. Ozzy, how frequently do you recommend getting the regenerative plasma exchange for wellness? Well, again, we're, we're studying this process. Um, we have some amazingly proactive patients who are helping us to understand this data. So for instance, um, uh, one of our patients who is a biohacker, uh, that's somebody who is very committed to doing everything possible to live the fullest life possible. Um, we've been doing um, uh, large-scale methylomic studies uh, that help define his biological age. We've also been tracking his telomeres, which is something that goes down as you age. And uh, we were able to show that with just one uh, regenerative plasma exchange that he had a nearly five year change in his biologic age as measured by these um, uh, methylation changes in his genes. This is where we measure 850,000 different gene sites uh, and methylation is what actually controls uh, is a gene turned on or turned off. Really fascinating data to give us a quantification about what is our biological age rather than just what is our chronologic age, because that's really what matters. So, um, I would say that, um, oh, and then we've been tracking that. So we actually think the the sicker one is, the more frequent it would be optimally to do this. Uh, probably when one's around fifty years of age, uh, getting this done once a quarter uh, would be an amazing help. 
uh, I'm testing that out. And, um, and then uh, individuals, the more chronic disease one has, the more inflammation or the more, um, uh, especially autoimmune disease, the more frequently I think this would be beneficial, even up to once every month. Um, uh, so a question, so what exactly are you using in your clean plasma? So the, uh, so we're using um, pharmaceutical based plasma, uh, or excuse me, albumin. And it, albumin is a really remarkable substance. This is obtained via the pooling of plasma uh, that's done at uh, up of uh, uh, places like uh, plasma donation centers. And uh, they will take like nearly 9,000 of these plasma donations and they put them into one big vat together. Uh, they separate out the albumin, which is kind of like a sponge uh, inside of the plasma from the immunoglobulins, which are the antibodies that are present in the uh, plasma. And, uh, and so the antibodies go off to one side that becomes IVIG as another therapeutic uh, and many other things are derived out of plasma. And then the albumin itself is uh, cleaned. Uh, it's heated, actually heated up to almost 160 degrees. Uh, and it's left there for almost a day, which basically causes the proteins to unfold slightly. Uh, any type of viruses, bacteria, other things die off. Nothing can really survive that environment. It's washed, washed again and again. And then what you're left with is kind of naked. Uh, albumin. So this is not just a replacement substance, but you can almost think of it like a sponge. As you're putting in this naked albumin, it's, uh, there's many things that stick on to albumin and get pulled out of the body. So we think this is, this is one of the reasons why repetitive exchanges can be so incredibly beneficial. Um, and then uh, we have um, a, a lot of different uh, modifications according to blood testing that we do um, and uh, many different things to increase our rate of safety uh, for the very small side effects that can happen with plasma exchange. Um, but uh, everything is uh, focused on customization for the individual. Um, so, uh, is it known that the nervous system needs to be regulated before any modalities will work, especially like with trauma? Um, how will this help? Um, if the detox pathways aren't working properly, will this reduce the effectiveness of this treatment? You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of being honest about trauma. Uh, trauma is a big deal to, that holds back people's lives and upregulates the immune system. It causes all kinds of neurologic issues. But this is a real biologic therapy. And the good news is because we are a system of systems, we're not, just an, we're not just a system of emotions, but we're a system of electricity and a system of biochemistry and a, and a system of structure. Uh, improving this biologic system has massive ramifications, especially Gary, what a great story, right? Here, we weren't treating him for treating him for any mood problem, or we weren't treating irritability. We weren't putting him on Prozac or you know, a major tranquilizer. We weren't giving him sleeping medications to help him sleep better. Those things just happened as his brain physiology started to improve, which I think is, that's really the essence of root cause medicine. So, um, and also this plasma exchange process doesn't depend on any detoxification pathways. I mean, this is the Mac daddy of all detoxification uh, because we're literally removing um, the, the substances from the body uh, in large mass. Uh, the, so the liver and the kidney don't have to do that type of work. So um, how does this technique work on traumatic brain injury? Well, uh, we don't have any data on that, but Traumatic brain injury has a feed forward uh, inflammatory process that uh, exists and that, uh, and um, uh, we also use quantitative EEG and neurofeedback in individuals with traumatic brain injury. Um, so that's kind of to help the wiring patterns become more uh, cohesive once again, and, um, and more functional. So I don't know that we... It, if, the, if we can calm down the inflammatory state using plasma exchange, uh, then I think that could be a benefit. Wouldn't be the first thing that I would, I would think of. Um, so, um, so how does this help the vagus nerve? 
Well, you know, any type of uh, trauma or any type of inflammation um, can cause the vagus nerve to uh, be out of balance with your fight or flight system. Um, we haven't done any studies on the vagus nerve, but what we have done studies on, what are very interesting, is the effect of this therapy on the glycocalyx. So the glycocalyx is a, um, a, a, a Teflon coating that's in the inside of your blood, uh, inside of your blood vessels. We've been studying it here for several years, and it came about with one of our first patients that did plasma exchange. He had Parkinson's disease, and um, and he was one of our very early fans. I've been taking care of him for over a decade, and um, and he knew all about what we were doing and why we were doing it. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, we don't have any evidence that this is going to help Parkinson's disease, except the fact that Parkinson's is like Alzheimer's disease and that it has, it's a, a misfolded protein response, uh, and that it, it is a feed forward process often has a lot to do with, uh, toxicity. And, um, and so, 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 you know, this may slow down your progression, but let's not have too high hopes. Um, cause you know, listen, we always want to make sure we're not over stating what we know about something, <laughs> but his response was remarkable. And this was not a guy who was, uh, susceptible to a placebo response. We tried a lot of things without much benefit. <laughs> and he, the, over the course of the week after we did plasma exchange, he started gardening again. He started playing the piano, which he hadn't done in five years. He asked his wife out on dates and he went back to the boardroom and took over control of his, uh, company. Uh, you know, it was, and he, he said it with, with joy being back in those meetings and those environments. Uh, and, and we're, we're just flummoxed by that. But then I started thinking about it. It's like, you know, he had incredibly sticky blood. I mean, we had a hard time doing plasma exchange and every time we do plasma exchange, his blood would get more, uh, would get thinner and more function better. And so uh, we started getting, uh, looking at viscometers and ways to quantify the stickiness of the blood. And one of those is a device we have. We have one of the only like uh, 60 to 80 clinics in the United States that have this device called a glycocheck. And we can actually measure the stickiness of the blood. Uh, and sure enough, his was incredibly bad. Uh, with a plasma exchange, it made a huge difference uh, in his function. Uh, and we're, so... Just by doing plasma exchange is also one of the treatments or a apheresis is one of the treatments for very high cholesterol. So we actually, you, the, there's a process of being able to use, remove cholesterol using another technique much like this. So if we can improve blood vascular health, we can, we can create a huge amount of um, benefit to all organs that need to have oxygen delivered to them. Uh, another question. So dad 73 is being set for PET scan for dementia soon. Uh, what point is too late to get him into Maxwell for your help? Um, uh, too late is dead. <laughs> I'm not being silly about that. Uh, but also going back to recognize that uh, the more neurons that die, uh, the less of, uh, you know, the harder it is to make forward movement. Uh, the earlier that we can intervene, and this is going by the data supported by AMBAR and also our personal, our personal experiences that uh, more frequent uh, plasma exchanges tend to do better for people. Um, I think that's, is, um, that's important. I, the brain has tremendous capacity to heal, but this is why I've emphasized in this talk that uh, the sooner that you can recognize that there is a problem and be honest about that, there's no shame in dementia. There is no shame whatsoever. Um, you know, we are all just walking each other home in this life. And, um, and individuals that have dementia give the rest of us a real great opportunity to be kind uh, and to be of service uh, in, in them. So it's really, um, it's really a pr profound, a profound situation. So, uh, okay. Have you had success using a uh, plasma exchange in autoimmune patients? Oh yeah, very much so. Like sometimes in the chair, uh, improvements, uh, how long would it take to see improvements in autoimmunity since autoimmune disease, autoimmune disease is chronic. Is it safe to assume that plasma exchange needs to be a lifelong and frequent treatment? Okay. Great, great point. 
Um, think of in autoimmune disease, you have an abundance of abnormal antibodies that are present in the body and they're causing some kind of injury or damage. And, um, uh, you know, I grew up in South Dakota, so um, you know, people in Tennessee don't get this analogy as well, but hopefully all will. Um, think of a snowstorm, right? So you got a big old Midwestern snowstorm, that snow is coming down, blocks the driveway out, uh, and, and you get out the snowblower. And snowblowers are amazing things, man. They have saved many backs. Um, and plasma exchange is kind of like blowing out the driveway uh, so that you can get things moving again and get the world functioning again. Uh, but if it's still snowing, you have to just keep coming back and blowing out the driveway and blowing out the driveway and blowing out the driveway. Now, we don't know how to stop snowing, but we should be really diligent about finding ways to calm down the autoimmune uh, process. Um, and that's what, you know, slowing the snowfall is really about. We have two physician patients uh, that have sought us out because um, really the center in the United States to do this, and they both come from several states away. Uh, one of them, we've completely reversed uh, his uh, scleroderma. You know, so an orthopedic surgeon with incredible ulcers on all of his fingers needing to leave surgery because he wasn't able to continue that process. Uh, and he has had a dramatic healing. His the skin on the tips of his fingers are now normal. Uh, and uh, his pulmonary function has improved. His exercise capacity has improved. Uh, but we, we went after that, not just with plasma exchange, but also with changing his diet, seeking out uh, infections that may be revving up the immune system, making sure his uh, nourishment was optimized. Uh, looking for other toxins that could cause a feed forward mechanism. So plasma exchange is a great tool, um, but I always think it's like, I'll always make sure what is the least expensive, least toxic, most beneficial long-term therapies that need to be done. Um, I don't think there's any replacement for plasma exchange, especially when we're thinking about dementia and, and certainly in very severe autoimmune disease. But uh, we, we always want to make sure we're setting every patient up for the greatest possibility for success possible. Um, uh, and then the other physician I just want to mention, you know, he had been blown off by his doctors repeatedly because he had a, you know, a degenerative peripheral, uh, nerve problem. And, uh, we did some advanced testing. We, off, we often utilize, uh, Mayo Clinic's, um, neuro autoimmune, uh, uh de department. Uh, and we have other, several other labs that measure some, uh, less common, auto antibodies, uh, we were able to identify a, a putative target enough that he was really wanting to move forward with plasma exchange and see what a different it went, different it made it. And uh, within four treatments, really the first treatment, he was astounded by, by the fourth treatment, he was able to take off his uh, leg braces and walk in his own living room for the first time in years. Uh, you know, about six treatments in, he was able to do a little dance and the muscle mass that has increased in his lower extremities is remarkable. His pain has gone down tremendously. Um, it's really profound. So um, as we've watched plasma exchange progress and we've watched its power across many different disease types, we recognize that it is the body's capacity to heal. What we're doing is unloading the body of some type of a toxic burden uh, so that it has the ability to move forward. And we also have several other research programs going, looking at adding in various things that can really augment the healing process. Um, because this is, this is a, an amazing, it's such a privilege to get to lead this new field of medicine. Uh, we're really the first uh, in the United States to be doing this in, in a systematic way. Uh, and uh, to follow the data that's already out there. You know, I, I think it's, it's really a matter of uh, morality to move forward. If we know that this has uh, a high degree of likelihood of success and a manageable amount of risk, uh, we need to do what we can where we are uh, to move this uh, science and practice forward. So um, question, will this help a person with mild cognitive impairment? Well, again, we're learning more, but what is mild cognitive impairment? So you're saying a person who had normal cognition now has less than normal cognition. Um, number one, that's a five alarm fire, 
right? That is, that is a balls to the walls. Look at everything up, down, sideways, forward, and, and around the corner. Um, figure out what the heck is happening and, and address everything as, as aggressively as possible. I don't, uh, early memory loss is a late stage event. All right. That's not a popular thing to say, but it's a biologically accurate thing to say. And, and so, um, and then, yeah, I would be thinking of plasma exchange if that were me or that was my loved one. Um, but more important is to say, you know, why is it happening? You know, um, there are many reversible and contributory causes to uh, an early dementing process. And, um, and I think that we want to have a, a really aggressive um, uh, movement forward on this. So um, several uh, questions about cost. Um, you know, the, the cost of these procedures, you know, like a year's worth of therapy would be less than what it would be to be in a memory care center for the year. Um, and, but a lot of that is very determined upon what is the frequency that's recommended for an individual um, and you know what under the other underlying causes uh, need to be taken. Um, and um, okay, great. And then um, you know, I, I'm going to close up. I'm being told by my timekeeper here. We're going to keep this at an hour. Uh, but uh, I want to share that you know our brains are the most important organ that we carry, uh, and our brains really determine our quality of life. And that doesn't mean just for dementia. It means for every aspect of our being. Our brains determine whether or not we can follow through on behaviors that are going to be important to help our health long-term, right? Uh, our brains uh, give us our experience of life. Our brains filter our information. You know, there's many people who have watched this video or have dropped off already who go like, oh, I don't want to hear that. And are going to find some kind of a story to tell themselves about what this, what this talk was really about. You know, we're trying to protect ourselves from pain. We're trying to protect ourselves from harm all the time. Uh, and so we tell ourselves stories and we create ideas in our mind. I think it's just so important to have grace for each other. Each one of us have this miracle of a mind. We have this amazing thing we call a brain that we get the privilege to use for a time. And um, I would just want to make sure that everybody is uh, giving themselves as, as much grace as possible. Uh, give those loved ones that are being challenged with memory grace. You know, if they're fearful, just love on them, right? I mean, it's not a, this is not a matter of right and wrong. You know, it's a matter of, of love and care. And, um, and we have, we, we want to care for people uh, no matter if we can help them or not. So I want to really uh, come back again. I'm going to put that last screen up here on the, uh, I'm going to put that last screen up here again. So if you um, uh, can find the, uh, I want to make sure you find the, uh, oops, tell you what, every once in a while, there are too many buttons that exist here, right? So I'm going to hit share screen again. Da, da, da. That little thing, da da. Wow, am I proud of myself now? And um, so remember, uh, care for your brain, care for it lovingly, honestly, courageously, comprehensively, and do it now, no matter what that means for you. Uh, you're welcome to schedule a consult to talk about regenerative plasma exchange. Go to www.maxwellclinic.com forward slash RPE uh, or click the link in the chat box. I think there's been placed there. Um, uh, thank you all for your time. Um, I want to encourage you, the brain heals. Uh, we are designed to heal. Um, have hope, uh, be kind to each other. And um, until next time, I look forward to being with you. This is Dr. David Haas at Maxwell Clinic. Bye-bye.